Well, welcome back into a very uh, sunny 1st of May morning here in uh, Norfolk and uh, time for an update on the lemon trees and how they've been doing over winter. The last couple of days here we've had sort of 23, 24 degrees so uh, overnight temperatures not dropping below 10 and decided to bring these two out for the first time just to start, well, getting them used to uh, the cooler temperatures because they have been struggling in the... Uh, the barn window just behind me where they've been sitting you've probably seen them sitting just in there but that's getting awfully warm now for them so time to bring them out get the light uh, back onto these leaves you can see I've been watering them uh, increasingly and feeding them since uh, around middle of January early February and we've got a good deal of new growth on them but as you can see these ones have been struggling there's no flower on these at all at this stage and because they had such a rotten year last year, no fruit on them either. So we really do need to get these flowering initially, pollinated, and some fruit set. But part of the reason that we've been having such a problem with these has been the scale insect infestation that we've had. This particular one's not been too bad. It has got a little bit of cross-contamination on it, but just let me show you this one. Different variety of lemon, much smaller leaf, you'd think, but it... Uh, should have these big leaves on them and if I just bring you in here you can see on this stem here let me try and get it in focus so we can show you these scale insects can you see them there on the uh, the stem let me find a better example here's a quite badly infected leaf you can see them just along the veins of the leaf those little pale white uh, flattened insects just sitting in there and quite often when you turn the leaf over you'll find them again along the veins of the leaf let me see if i can find an example for you there see those little pale green things just adherent onto the leaf and as they get bigger they tend to migrate onto the stalks of the lemon tree but the little baby versions of these are absolutely minuscule and I've been struggling over the winter just to reduce the sheer volume that we've got on this tree and they literally suck the life out of it so here's a really good example there you see those two one each side of this vein and further smaller ones down the end I don't they haven't been eating this leaf that leaf damage has been done by something else but what they do is just suck the sap out of the leaves and again here look absolutely covered in it and basically take all the nutrients and goodness out of the plant which means it's got no strength to put into lemons at all so anyway I've decided to uh, trial something that I've been putting off for a while I've watched a couple of videos on this it's called neem oil and this is what you get when you purchase it online. This is a bio-organic uh, neem oil. 100 mils, cost about £6.50. Um, I was expecting it to be really smelly, but it really doesn't smell that strong when you open this up and dilute it. You can see when it comes at room temperature, it's quite clumpy, almost forms a solid, and getting it di dissolved into a, a water spray is quite difficult. They say it's quite easy, and it is if you add a soap or detergent. Uh, that acts as a surfactant, otherwise it just sits on top of your water. Now I've used an old uh, spray container here and you can see what it looks like when you dilute it up. I've used one mil in 100 mils of uh, water and I've used warm water again to try and dissolve the neem oil into it. And uh, it says on all the internet sites to use uh, dish soap but it's not something I have sitting around dish soap don't really know what that means whether it just means solid soap but what I used was just a squirt of um, a fairy liquid type washing up liquid to act as a surfactant and dissolve the neem oil into the solution it forms this sort of dirty brownie milky solution this neem oil is used as a skin softener and moisturizer so as far as using it's concerned you don't have to take any particular special measures Try and coat the leaves on both sides, top and bottom, and you can give it a really good drench. I've brought these outside, obviously, it's best to do it outside. 
but what I've done is spray that entire plant with the neem oil solution and hopefully over the next few days that's going to affect these little uh, scale insects and they should brown off and hopefully die. We will see. What I've uh, also experimented with this year on these uh, lemon trees is rather than scraping all the compost off and uh, replenishing it with fresh compost, I've allowed these oxalis seedlings just to start growing in the top of both of these lemon trees and they give me a really good indicator. The oxalis uh, get soft when the lemons need watering and recover quite well. They also give you these lovely little flowers but I use those as an indicator over winter as to when the compost was really drying out. I may scrape these off now as they're coming out into the garden over summer and replenish the top layer of compost as we do most years try and get some nutrients into these but I'm also liquid feeding now with a tomato feed to try and encourage some uh, flower formation on these and hopefully they'll get away and if I can get on top of this scale insect that will really transform how I manage these uh, lemon trees over the winter period here in Norfolk because you know we are fighting nature really it's not a crop you'd expect to be able to grow outside or inside in the UK without some form of protection and a bit of bit of help so we'll see how we get on with these I'm going to do a follow-up video in a couple of days to report back on how effective my neem oil has been because uh, if that does do what I'm hoping it's going to do I'm really going to be quite impressed thanks for watching